Hello everyone. In the second module of this course, we will look at types of innovation. After briefly looking at the concept of innovation, we will look at what do you mean by product innovation, process innovation, marketing and organization innovation. We will try and understand the nature of these innovation in terms of it being radical or incremental. Then we will have a look at the sectoral innovation. There are very there are various terms which has been become very popular recently, including like inclusive innovation, frugal innovation, grassroots innovation, or maybe disruptive and sustaining innovation. So we will have a look at that. We will also try to understand the context from where these innovation terms are coming forward. The last section in this particular module will focus on user-centric and manufacturing-centric innovation. As Schumpeter pointed out, innovation includes new consumer goods, new markets, new forms of industrial organization that capitalist enterprise creates, new methods of production and transportation. Now, the question is, how do you measure this innovation? So, the types of innovation that I am going to present you is essentially is essentially motivated by how we are going to measure innovation. It is in fact very important from the point of view of the researchers who are going to undertake their studies, particularly empirical studies in this field. So what is innovation, how it is measured? Understanding scale of innovation activities, the characteristics of innovative form and internal and systemic factor that can influence the innovation is a prerequisite for the pursuit and analysis of policies which are effectively looking at fostering innovation. So then, in order to support these kind of an empirical works, Oslo Manual was first published in 1992. It is indeed an international reference guide for collecting and using data on innovation. And in its fourth edition, the manual has updated in to take into account a broader range of innovation-related phenomenon as well as experience gained from recent rounds in service among the different OECD countries and partner economies and organization. So then we will look at this manual and try and understand how innovation as a concept has evolved in the different years over a period of year. So initially, if you look at the manual in 1995, it talked about technological product and process innovation and the differential impact that kind of an innovation has on the society. Within two years, they extended this product and process innovation discussion to the service sector. Then within, within the next eight years, the idea was to bring in non-technical innovation in the form of marketing and organizational innovation. So let us first try and see what do you mean by product innovation? Product innovation as per OECD is essentially introduction of a good or services since the definition is now extended to service or significantly improved with respect to the characteristics or the intended use. It may either be an improvement of the technical specification or that of a component, could be of that of a material, or it may incorporate software which was not earlier in present. It might become more user friendly and have certain other functional characteristics. So, as has been pointed out, it covers both goods and services. So, let us look at some of the examples in the product innovation to understand it in a better way. Let us see one such example and these examples also come from OECD manual itself. So cameras in the mobile telephone, that's a product innovation. Fastening system in clothing, breathable textiles, light but strong composites, environmental friendly plastic, GPS in transport equipment, household appliances, anti-fraud software, inbuilt wireless networking in laptops, Program, programmable radiators or thermostat. So now this gives you a fairly a decent idea of what do we mean when we talk about product innovation. Let me just revisit the definition in light of these examples one more time. So what did we say? It is essentially an introduction of a good or a services which could be either an improvement with respect to the characteristics or the intended use. So if you look at this camera in Tele mobile telephone, 
what has happened there? In fact, that essentially means the characteristics of the mobile phone has now been changed. Not only that, its intended use, which was merely earlier limited to talking over a, with the friends, is now now extended to include clicking of pictures. Then let us say if you talk about environmentally friendly plastic, the plastic again maybe it has changed certain technical specification to that or the material itself which has been introduced is now environmental friendly. Once again we have talked about that components and material. Anti-fraud software again software incorporating software. And then other you can see has a essentially different kind of a features. For example, GPS in a transport equipment, wireless networking in the laptops, in the laptops, programmable radiators in the thermostat. Now let's move on and understand a bit more about product innovation. It can be involve two generic types of products, goods and services. Goods essentially include in uh, essentially include tangible objects and some uh, knowledge capturing product over which the ownership right can be established and they can also be transferred through the market transaction. Whereas services are essentially intangible activities, they are produced and consumed simultaneously and it uh, change the conditions also. They can be physical, psychological. The attributes or the experience of a service essentially depend upon the inputs of user. Services can also include some knowledge capturing product. Moving on to the process innovation. What do you mean by process innovation? It is effectively defined by OECD as the implementation of a new or a significantly improved product or a delivery method. It includes, it includes new methods, techniques, software and equipment in ancillary support activities. This kind of innovations are like installation of new or improved manufacturing technique, new equipment required for new or improved products etc. The definition will become more clear if you look at some examples. First example is a laser cutting tool, automated packaging, computer assisted product development digitization of printing processes, computerized equipment for quality control of production, improved testing equipment for monitoring production, portable scanners, new and improved software or routines of purchasing, accounting or maintenance systems, introduction of electronic clearing system, new or significantly improved computer networks, Introduction of barcoding or passive radio frequency reading RFID chips to track material to the supply chain. So now implementation of a new or a significantly improved production or a delivery method. You can see that in all these processes essentially either the delivery has been improved, it is an important part of the supply chain or the way the particular product is being created has been changed. For example, digitization of printing processes, computer assisted product development. So, in this case, the focus end up being the process, the focus end up being how we are a producing certain good or service. So, both new and improved business processes can be motivated by goals to implement business strategies, reduce cost improve product quality or working conditions or to meet regulatory requirement. The process innovation essentially here we talk about can be a part of the overall long term business strategy. The idea may be behind reducing the cost of the production or improving the quality of the environment in which the workers are working. Many a times the process innovation also follow from the regulatory requirement. Companies has to change the kind of input they are using for their factory. A business process can involve improvement to one or more aspect of the single business function or to combinations of the different functions also. It need not be limited to one, it can be more than one also, it can bring them together also. They can involve the adoption of the firm of a new and improved business services that are delivered by external contractor, for example, accounting, human resource system. Earlier, firms were engaging in doing everything within in-house. Now, if they decide 
that apart from their core services, they might rather engage an external contractor rather than doing everything on their own. That can really save the resources. Moving on, marketing innovation. Essentially, marketing innovation is introducing new marketing methods involving significant change in product design, product placement, and product promotion or pricing. Objective of the marketing innovation is to address the customer needs, penetrate new market, and also position the firm's product on the market with objective of increasing sale. The implementation of this significant change in the, let us say, the design of the future line of the furniture line to give it a new look and to widen its appeal, introduction of direct selling or exclusive retailing. In the recent times, with the introduction of social media, we have found that, that social media marketing has in fact become a very important way to market your product. In fact, nowadays, apart from the social media, you also realize that, that say for instance, if a new movie has to come in the market, then rather than merely having its board or maybe having a YouTube videos, you find that many a times the actor go to the different reality shows and also promote their movies. That kind of a innovation in the marketing has come by particularly with the growth of the reality shows. The last one is about the organizational innovation. If this is effectively of how an organization function. Can we innovate in that particular process? Implementation of a new organizational method in the form business, practice, organization or external relation. So for one point of a time, when we were talking about assembly line, you will realize that all the activities related to creation of that particular product was undertaken in that particular factory. However, over a period of a time, by the end of the 20th century, what we realize that as the modular design of the product emerges, the companies, instead of focusing on producing everything on their own, they started focusing on sourcing of the things from others suppliers. The sourcing of the suppliers will help them in the cost reduction immensely. Now this kind of innovation in the way of organization was being supported by the technical innovations in ICT, information and communication technology, which facilitated the process of not only of transferring things from one place to another place, but also of communicating among the different companies. So organizational improve innovation improves the firm performance by reducing administrative and transaction cost and the workplace satisfaction. Say for example, introduction of the management system for general production, quality management system, lean production, business re-engineering, supply chain management. So any such impro improvement in any such operations is essentially being talked about under the organizational innovation. F establishment of formal, informal work teams to assess, to share knowledge of different departments and maybe conduct R&D, first use of outsourcing of research or production. So innovation in this case is essentially talking about its both technological and technological, non-technological aspect. So you can think of it in terms of innovation being either technological or non-technological. Within the technological, you can place it under either the product or under the process innovation. Non-technological, you can replace them under the marketing or the organizational innovation. Now here, it has been pointed out that marketing and organizational innovation are very important part of the overall innovation activities of the firm. Many a times organizational innovation may be needed to support any kind of a change or in process introduction, new process introduction in the firm or even if a new product has been 
introduced that might means that certain innovations might be required in the marketing division also so all of these they are not something which are exclusive of each other indeed they are not mutually exclusive they in fact feed into each other and build into each other from a particular company's point of view many a times marketing innovation may be needed to support the new product or in sometimes in response to the marketing team the product will also be re looked at so broadly one way to understand the different types of innovation is to define them with respect to technological change sorry with respect to the technological uh, innovation and non technological innovation in the technological innovation we are looking at a product innovation and a process innovation whereby in the non technological we are looking at marketing and organizational many a times we have under this impression that this marketing and organizational innovation may not be that much prevalent which is not correct in fact marketing and organizational innovations are rather extremely prevalent you may find that they might be prevalent even in some cases in large firms or even in small and medium enterprises many a developing countries and least developed countries will also have much more marketing and organizational innovation just to maybe adopt or absorb the product which has been introduced or coming from the different market or because that is an easier way to make a profit